So hello everyone, I'm really glad to be here. My name is Manuel, and today I'll be presenting some work uh, on the relationship between misinformation and polarization under this catchy title. And uh, this work was done at the computer science department uh, at UFMG, which is my university in Brazil. So, okay, so the, the, the first, like, to contextualize, uh, news, uh, news consumption changed after people started using online social networks, right? And this happened in many dimensions. So uh, the, the, the first thing is that you have these uh, sources that don't have any reputation and they may reach thousands or millions of people and there's no clear rule on what, go vi what goes viral. So in, in a sense, like reputation matters less in this new context because you can basically, uh, you have these media outlets that they don't, they don't have a lot of, they're not accountable, they have no reputation and they still can reach a lot of people. Also, uh, in some way, the profit comes from clicks. So the way uh, that people monetize this news, uh, it, it, it changed the, the whole business because either you have a paywall or you have, uh, you have ads. And in, in any sense, you, you usually want, like in social media, you want to make headlines that uh, make people click and go to your website and eventually subscribe or click the ads. And, and last but not least, uh, you have recommended content in websites like Facebook. So uh, this is quite important because it actually uh, shapes what people see and it can create filter bubbles around people. So this is just to, to, to give an overview of, of how this new kind of environment is like. And, and, and due, due to this, this new context, uh, two phenomena, at least they have their impact increased, but, and also people perceive them as being more important things. So on one hand, you have opinion polarization and the other one, you have spread of misinformation. And there's, quite a, uh, there's a big literature studying them both. The idea of these papers kind of to see how they come together. So when it comes to opinion polarization, uh, we have that uh, these new contexts can alter these in, in many ways. So the recommendation algorithms may limit users to content that's not ideologically diverse. So people can, can surround themselves in a filter bubble and consume content only, only of things they agree with. And on the other hand, the system itself, the way news are monetized, like with clickbaits, and it can, it can fuel partisan news. So it may be that the news are changing itself to a model where it's better to be more sensationalist and, and, and less neutral, creating more polarization. Uh, on the other hand, uh, misinformation is also, spread of misinformation is also made easier. First, by, by the reason that anyone can have a tremendous reach, potentially. Uh, but also by the fact that you have these uh, bots that may be employed to disseminate misinformation. And there's plenty of literature on how these bots were used, for instance, uh, during the Brexit referendum in England, and the, the possible impact that these bots can have just by boosting, for instance, a hashtag in Twitter. Uh, and, and it is kind of widespread in media that there is an interaction between these two things. So you have a bunch of, of, you have a bunch of, of, of news pieces like this one which says stop calling everything fake news or every, that, that they suggest essentially that people are calling things that they disagree fake news. And, and this is the core idea of, of this paper. Uh, but you actually, you actually have previous studies that correlate these two things. So uh, they have this research group in Italy and they, have, they basically have two papers and which one kind of proves one direction. And in the first one, they actually kind of show evidence that polarized groups are more susceptible to the dissemination of misinformation. Uh, and, and on the other paper, they show that dissemination of misinformation plays a, a key role in creating polarized groups. So you basically have a, an interaction between these two things. Uh, and, and the question is, can, can this interaction happen in some other way rather than just intensifying each other? And, 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 and can, can this, this interaction be the fact that people call fake what they actually disagree with instead of what is actually fake. So, so this would be an, a new kind of, of problem. So, uh, and users actually designate incorrectly classified sources of misinformation uh, due to disagreement. So they say something is fake basically because they disagree with them. Uh, and, and, and the problem with this is it creates alternate narratives of what is true. So it can create groups that cannot, di cannot have any dialogue because Basically, they don't, they don't share common ground in, in basic things. So a way we can frame this is basically, we can ask ourselves, the, how is polarization quantitatively related to information perceived as or is related to fake news? 
There's a key question here, which makes these questions a bit simpler, that we're not talking about fake news specifically. We're talking about what is related or perceived as fake news. This kind of takes off the, the, the weight of having to classify what fake news is, which can be quite troubling in an environment with so much data. Uh, and on the other hand, uh, another question is, can, can we see if users are actually uh, designating content that they disagree with as, as being misinformation? And we'll try to address this question through the method and then show some results. So basically, we'll be using uh, Twitter data uh, here. And, uh, and we, we extracted a data set from Twitter. So uh, we collect the data set uh, in the following fashion. It's, a bit, it's, it's not very trivial. So basically, we, we basically collect tweets with words and hashtags related to misinformation using the stream API. So we just get a bunch of tweets that say, oh, hashtag fake news, hashtag misinformation. So all, for instance, all these hashtags would be our, our keywords would be something that we would consider. And then we get uh, stuff like this, like Huffington Post uh, compost, Huff, Huffington compost is a joke. Nobody believes they're fake pools or fake news. And then they send a URL. And we're interested in these URLs. Notice that we can call URLs both external URLs or for another website, but also another tweets because they're actually represented by a URL as well. And, and then after we have these URLs that people are classifying or relating to fake news, we actually uh, use the search API from Twitter and we find general comments, regardless they're telling the, the, these URLs are fake news or not. So they're just, oh, someone mentioned this URL. So uh, this is an example from the same URL from the previous one. So Canadian views of US hit an all-time low push. So these, they're not tagging it as fake news, but they're interacting with the same content as someone else that tagged it as fake news. Uh, with this, we can get a URL and a bunch, of, uh, a bunch of tweets that are related to this URL. Uh, and, and then the second part of the data collection is that we basically get for a long period of time, we got a bunch of uh, political related tweets and we, we run an algorithm to kind of know the, the, the political uh, instance of many of the users. Uh, and then we can get these uh, political, net, the, uh, a bunch of numbers that are connected to many of the tweets. So quite briefly, uh, we use, a, this is the graph that we have from all our users. It's around uh, a million users, if I'm not mistaken. So we basically uh, we use a, a community detection algorithm that's based on community detection. Uh, that's, sorry, that's based on a, on a random walk. So you assume that there's k communities formed around a topic. Uh, you already know the, the topic, so you kind of know that some people are already, I don't know, if Democrat and Republican, you know that's who is who, so you can just set them as seeds. Then we build a retweet by party graph, which is basically the graph of the retweets between people. Uh, and then we select the seed with non-political positions. And then a random worker departs from each of the seeds and travels. And it basically deposits a bit of uh, a link, like it deposits a bit of influence to that people. So, uh, so basically, if, if you retweeted someone who is Republican, you have an often, you, you kind of be more tied to that community and you'll be seen more as a Republican. It, it's not a perfect method, but it, it is quite good. Uh, and there's, uh, there's this paper there uh, that you can see more details. And then the, 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 you, you have this proximity of each node, and basically we infer some community, uh, we infer the community that a node belongs according to that. Uh, and then, uh, so after, we, after we've done all that, why are we using this for? It's a lot of data collection, and how can we use that? So basically, we want to calculate the polarization of an URL. So we want to, to calculate how polarized is a piece of news. And, and what we do is basically we get these users that we, we know of because of our data collection, and we basically aver average them. So we get the polarization of each one of the users, we sum, and then in this case we're doing Democrats and Republicans, so it's minus and plus, and then we sum and basically get a number for an URL. And, and this gives some, some interesting possibilities for us because then we can, after we have each uh, URL, which can be an external news or another tweet, after we have like this number associated to it, we can we can know a lot, a lot about uh, we can we can make a lot of questions to this to, to this new new data that has it's more rich in information, and so what would we gonna do with this data, and then the results is that we'll estimate users' political polarization on different domains, we'll estimate polarization political polarization of URLs, and we'll uh, and we use this to to 
to get the URLs that were more retweeted and kind of like analyze them qualitatively uh, so we can see kind of how people are using. Uh, so just, just a quick thing, uh, we, this is just to show that our method actually gets quite significant amount of users, so our, our, our estimation is actually reasonable. So we get 29% uh, of, the, of the users that uh, on that graph, we actually have a, a, pol a political polarization metric for them, so that's good. And uh, on the other hand, uh, our, our politics data set is much bigger. So it's only two, the other one, the, the, the intersection on the other side is quite smaller. So about the results, uh, so uh, first finding that we have, at least that shows that, is that once you get the users that are talking about fake news related topics, they are more polarized than the other ones. So this would be evidence towards that the, the first research question we made, so that we actually, in, when, we have, uh, when we have this fake news context, people are more polarized than in politics, which is already supposed to be a polarized context. Uh, another thing is that we can, we can see how many times each of the tweets were associ was associated with these misinformation tags. And uh, surprisingly, not surprisingly, uh, w whenever, you have, uh, whenever you have this increase in the, in, in the number of associations, it grows. So this is for all the tweet, is tweet equals false means external URL, so a URL to a, a newspaper. And when the tweet is, is tweet is called true, is a, is, it means a, a, re a retweet. So you can see that if, if something is associated a lot with hashtag fake news, it's basically only one side that is telling it's fake news. So this is kind of like saying that you kind of have this, this linkage between what, I don't know, not everyone is saying the same things is fake news, basically. And uh, when you get reactions, uh, the, the number, the, with the number of reactions, which is the number of interactions of other users, the polarization decreases. Uh, but there's an interesting thing that when something is in the fourth quartile, which is the, the news that are more reacted to, more retweeted, more uh, shared, uh, you actually have that this increases a bit. So it, it is, but it, overall, it's what you expect. Like if something goes viral, everyone will comment on it. And uh, another interesting finding that we had is that when we started with this, we kind of expected that people would, I don't know, if you're, would, would get some source that you disagreed with or someone who you disagreed with and would, uh, would kind of like say, oh, this is fake news. But to our own surprise, to our own surprise, it was the following. So if I gave you these two word clouds, you maybe think that Republicans would say that CNN is fake news and that, uh, uh, that Democrats would say that Breitbart is fake news. But actually, people usually retweet someone else saying that, this is fake news. So instead of retweeting like a news by CNN saying, oh, CNN is fake news, they basically retweet someone in Breitbart that wrote CNN is fake news. So they, 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 don't, they don't give any attention to the media they're criticizing with. They usually use the other way around uh, in many cases. Uh, and then we, 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 we did kind of an extraction method to get relevant tweets of all different types of polarization. And it's more described on the paper, but here I'll just like show you guys some of the tweets that were that show these different usages of the term fake news. So for instance, uh, one thing is that people use fake news to dismiss a narrative. So in this case, you have FBI clears Michael Flynn in probe linking him, linking him to Russia. And what happens is this is a highly uh, polarized one. And basically because you had people that dismissing the narrative that Trump was, had ties to Russia or that Trump's administration had ties to Russia. So this is a bit counterintuitive, but it's not that what, what this is fake news. It's just they, they, they say that there's a narrative that they think is fake news, and this, this piece of, of information contradicts this narrative, which, which is a, a bit complicated usage for many of the algorithms that people think about employing there. You have humor, so you have a prisoner dressed as a woman in beat, failed to escape. So you have these kind of things that people are just being sarcastic. Uh, so, and then you have the, the more interesting one. So you have fake news tagging, which is basically. Uh, the, 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 the thing I told, so fem, like, it's basically another side saying that uh, fake news existed and people just tweet that and as they are, you have this media website saying that there's fake news around, they, uh, they tweet it. And you have faked, fake news tagging, which is like Trump posted something and people actually, this is the most expected one, people disagree with him. Uh, so uh, as conclusion, 
So we present this evidence of various interactions between polarization and misinformation, and we present some uh, qualitative evidence of how people use this differently. But what does this mean? Uh, this may present challenges for solutions that try to use the wisdom of the crowd to predict what is fake, uh, and polarization may prove itself to be a useful feature for distinguishing between what is fake and what is not. So yeah, so thank you. <laughs>